Fam, it's Oxfam. First of all, we would like to thank our 161 subscribers and more than 4,000 views since we started this vlog last August. Our goal is to help those aspiring nurses and healthcare providers here in Alberta, Canada. And we would like also to help those who aspire to become permanent residents. As you have noticed in our previous vlogs, it's my wife who talks a lot and she gave me this opportunity to vlog this vlog myself. So I hope and I will try my best to do this vlog in English since we have friends from other countries who are also interested in this sponsorship program. By the way, I am Raz and I have worked as an operating room nurse in the Philippines for about 9 years. My family and I moved here in Alberta last month and we already talked about this in the previous vlog. If you want to watch it, the link's down below. I am so thankful to the Lord um, for this kind of opportunity since I am one of the applicants who successfully passed this sponsorship program which is called the AHS Pilot Program or the AHS IEN or Internationally Educated Nurses Recruitment Initiative. So just to let you know, I started my application without taking the NCLEX exam yet. I have no status in Canada and had no practice permit here in Alberta and I applied straight in the Philippines. So if you're interested in becoming a nurse here, then please stay and watch the whole video. So our first topic is how and when did we stumble upon this opportunity? So my wife was searching for jobs after we created our express entry profile and she stumbled upon this AHS page where she found this international applicants portion of the careers page. Next, who is AHS? AHS stands for Alberta Health Services. It is Canada's biggest province-wide integrated health system with over 112,300 employees serving 4.4 Albertans as well as some residents of neighboring provinces. Third, how did you apply? So my wife tried to sign me up. Then two months after, on February 8th, I received an email saying that after assessing my response, I didn't qualify. Um, we thought that maybe because I didn't pass the NCLEX exam yet and had no permit to practice in Alberta and had no status in Canada. But that's not the case. So there is a question if English is the primary language of practice since we are in the Philippines. I should have answered yes instead of no since all of our documentations, um, endorsements, and even the medium of instructions are in English. So we tried to sign up again and just waited. The next day. So one day after, February 11th, I received an email from the HS acquisition asking for the following documents. First, they asked for my degree or college diploma with RLE. Second is trans school transcripts or we call it TOR in Philippines. Our license, which is PRCID, and West Report. Since I mentioned that I was given a notification of interest by Alberta for provincial nomination and we were already in the express entry pool. What's in store for us IENs in this sponsorship? So all assessments are covered. This includes the ANAS and the CRNA, then liability coverage, your CNPS, and this is for reimbursement airfare for the employee, financial support, and they will reimburse eligible expenses like travel, accommodation, relocation, meals, incidentals. And for those um, employees who are coming with their families, they will be giving a bigger financial support. For those coming with family, there will be relocation support to cover accommodations for the first three months. So I'm sharing with you my timeline through this roadmap. Let's begin with number one. So I signed up again last February 10th and got a link to upload documents the following day like resume, college diploma, transcript, PRC license or my registered nurse license back in the Philippines, my West report and RLE. And then six days after, I received a link for the consent to share information 
to all the agencies working on my application. On March 4, I became shortlisted and received an email that I needed to complete three assessments, Salban for the English proficiency, NS for education and experience verification, and CRNA for the practice permit or the license. I was thinking about when to book my Salban exam when it was discussed in the town hall that if you practice nursing in English, you may not have to take the Salban and provide necessary documents like a certification that you practice nursing in English. Well, for me, I secured a certificate of employment stating that we use English in our practices in the hospital. On March 16, I received a link for NS, especially for AHS pilot program shortlisted applicants. On April 6, CRNA made changes in the licensing process and I received the link to create a CRNA account even though my NS assessment was still ongoing. I completed my CRNA application on April 19. I only paid the CNPS since the registration fee was paid for by AHS. On May 1, about 11 to 12 days after registering with the CRNA, I received my temporary permit which is for a graduate nurse since I did not write the NPLEX exam yet. The same day, CRNA also sent me my eligibility to take the NPLEX and they provided a link for registration. I notified the IEN recruitment team that I already received my practice permit. So one week after, they sent me my job interview date. I also received an email asking for references which should be a current manager and a previous manager or supervisor a second reference and a self-assessment on my nursing skills. It was on the same week I registered and paid for my NCLEX and one week after, I received my ATT or authorization to test. I was interviewed on May 17. I was honestly nervous and I felt like I didn't pass the interview since they told me that the initiative is for rural and we initially planned to live in Calgary and, and it's only for generalists. FYI, a week after, my family and I already received our COPR or the confirmation of permanent residence in our PR tracker, which means our PR application was already approved. But we still needed to wait for the passport requests. So on June 9th, I received a call from the HR of AHS congratulating me that I have been offered a job. Like it was 1 a.m. in the morning in the Philippines. And yes, I was offered a job as a regular and full-time OR nurse. For those who know how it is so difficult or it is challenging to get a job as a nurse in Alberta. And what more as an OR nurse? The first thing that dawned in my mind was, wow, I really passed the interview. <laughs> I feel so blessed. I was so grateful for God about this opportunity. But as the HR mentioned that it will be in Edmonton, my heart partially sank because we were so fixated with Calgary since my sister is residing in Calgary and it will be easier for our transition. But during the time, God impressed to us that we should only trust and rely on Him. Even though it's an uncharted territory for us, he will bless us with people who will help us in our journey. And she gave me 24 hours to accept the offer. So after 24 hours of talking about it with my wife and praying for wisdom from the Lord, um, I accepted the job offer. Six days after the verbal job offer, I was sent the electronic job offer, which you have to accept and that will be the day you're officially hired. A few days after, the immigration consultant of AHS reached out to me and the onboarding team reached out shortly after. On July, since we were still waiting for our passports to get stamped as well as our visa issued, we just kept the immigration consultant and the onboarding in the loop. While waiting, they sent me the pre-arrival requirements or pre-arrival required education. When we received our passports, the onboarding team worked closely with our travel agency to coordinate our flights and travel. They booked our flight on July 17th. On the same month, my unit managers 
arranged a virtual welcome meeting and told me about my arrangements like I will be enrolled in a perioperative course as part of my orientation and training. On August 2, I took my NPLEX exam and I received the results 24 hours after. I passed. When I looked at my permit, it's already registered nurse now. Previously, it was graduate nurse. So after that, I already complied my recognition of previous experience form since I was still in the Philippines, as well as my education allowance form. And before arriving in Canada, I was also welcomed virtually by the Associate Chief Nursing Officer herself. So we arrived in Canada two to three weeks before my start date in order for us to adjust and get settled. Upon arrival, I got my SIN, applied for the Alberta Health Card, and opened a bank account. Since I don't have any recent CPR training, I took the BLS course with the Heart and Stroke Foundation two weeks before my start date. I started work on the first week of September and I had to complete the ROLs or Required Organizational Learning Modules. On the last two weeks of September, I joined the Centralized Orientation along with other IENs who are part of the Cohort 1 of the pilot program. I got to meet the kind, generous, amazing people behind the pilot program and I am sincerely grateful to all of them for the hard work and passion to make all of this successful. This October, I will be observing in the OR for the first week and will start my perioperative course next week. Even I have worked for almost nine years in OR in the Philippines, I am still grateful that I will be having this training. I am excited to learn and since their practice here is kind of different from ours in the Philippines. And for our next topic, it will be all about salary and rate. So I know that a lot of you are excited to know about the salary and rate. You can refer to these UNA salary tables for nurses in 2023. You can see the salary steps for registered nurses. There's also one for graduate nurses which start at 35.87 CAD per hour. The good thing is that HS recognizes all previous nursing experience, which accounts for about 1,920 hours per step, up which is equivalent to one year. So let's say if you have eight to nine years of nursing experience, your starting salary could go up to step nine immediately. There's another addition to your hourly rate, which is the uh, education allowance, and these are rates for that. We initially thought that the pilot program has ended since we couldn't find the button for it in the AHS page, but we heard of applicants that have been shortlisted for the past two months and their applications are progressing. So yes, I encourage you to continue your applications since this is a very big opportunity for us um, internationally educated nurses, either you're in Canada already or outside Canada. Please don't be discouraged with the waiting time since all the waiting will be worth it. If you have more questions about the program or the experience or whatever, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless us all.